What? What is it? Is, are we talking <laughs> the Stephen King book? The film? What? We have Pennywise? to be talking about. <laughs> we have to be talking about the shark. Like it's it's got to be about that, especially because you see, I can't make out this woman, assumedly woman, uh, her haircut, but uh, it's got to be like, hi, I'm Sally so and so. This is my firm, and we're gonna help these guys prosecute within the full extent of the law, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, it's probably one of those like puff things where you read it and you're like, oh man, this is terrifying. But you know what? Good for them. Good for them. They're gonna get a little pocket change out of this. See, that's a beautiful practical answer. And I mean, it makes sense and it's beautiful, but what if it, <laughs> when do I hit it makes sense? Like that it, you know, they call it it. And then, you know, Rennie Harlan loves horror movies. He directed Nightmare on Elm Street 4. What if this is all the same universe? <laughs> <laughs> so the it there is Freddy Krueger. Yeah, one of them. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. I feel like that would be more of a front page. We'll be dealing with that rather than test shark escapes. It'll be scarred demon killing children in dreams. They've been dealing with him since the 80s. He's old news. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of old news, look at the independent post. Yes, Near yes. disaster at sea. Near Why is it? <laughs> exactly. USA Today is like test shark escapes. We are selling newspapers. Meanwhile, this assumedly local paper is like, hey, guys, it almost got really bad out there. That's a <laughs> and, terrible front page headline. <laughs> Near disastrous. <laughs> yeah. Hey, guys, maybe this happened. We don't know. But how is it that a national conglomerate like USA Today is going to have better sources and boots on the ground quicker than the Independent Post? Again, assumedly closer to the action than what USA Today is. Could the Independent Post be like the guy from Hot Fuzz who, who's a really bad reporter? Hi, hi. <laughs> 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 oh, I gotta rewatch that movie. Oh. It's perfect. It's so rewatchable. <laughs> Oh, you got a you got a mustache. Shout out to the uh, the Cornetto Minute who have been doing the uh, the Cornetto films one minute at a time. They're oh, doing awesome. the world's end at the moment, and it's very insane. That's that's the movies one minute shout out for this week's show. How <laughs> how disappointed were you guys that there wasn't anything like stupid on the papers, so, such as man drowns in Jello, or so very disappointed, Mark. or or woman gets shot 250 yards by a homemade trebuchet. I mean, it's. Uh, didn't were you, were you hoping to read something like that and you didn't like how'd you feel i was hoping for like some kind of uh, an in joke of an ad for a hat that was like a shark's fin that kind of thing oh just, just like a, a little nod like an, an in an easter egg for the rest of the film but, uh, but nothing man hangs from a cliff for 90 minutes yeah, that would work. Cliffhanger, <laughs> cliffhanger reference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Something that either, you know, like Samuel Jackson has done before, or one of the directors have done before, but this goes to show you they're not playing around. Like they're taking this as serious as possible. And it doesn't go that way, I, I don't think, but I guess they're not as uh, tongue in cheek and winking on it as possible. I wonder if they're on set and they're like, this is going to be our Casablanca. <laughs> like this is going to be it for us we're all going up to the top because outside of you know michael rapaport thomas ten dollar jane and samuel jackson can you name anybody else from this movie that made it out ll cool j stedden skarsgård okay i forgot about those two <laughs> yeah. thank you for shooting a hole in my theory ed falco no, worries, Nick. no not ed no not ed falco's no wait ed Turo. I got my Sopranos references mixed up. But yeah, it's mainly, I mean, Saffron Boris did go on to work again. I'm shocked that her top four on IMDb does not include Deep Blue Sea. Her top mm. four is Troy. I do not remember her in Troy. The Bank Job, which quite a small film, it's entertaining. Mozart in the Jungle, which I'll admit I've never seen. And You, the Netflix series You, which again, I've never seen. I'm shocked that Deep Blue Sea isn't in there. And uh, Rain Over Me, the Adam Sandler Don Cheadle film, I think it is, is one that's kind of stuck with me as being a, a film that she's very good in as well. I I watched Dinner with Five. It was a show that John Favreau had where he had dinner with people, and they would all they would oh, all yeah. they would all. So I have the the box set of it, and there was an episode where Rappaport and she were on it, and they spoke pretty negatively against Deep Blue Sea and brushed it off. So I don't know how much control she has over her IMDb page, but I know she wasn't happy about the scene that happens later on in the movie. And so she was probably just, I don't know how much control you have, but maybe it's something like that. Because she did not seem happy about it. Mm, maybe, maybe. Interesting. Well, uh, before Deep Blue Sea, Saffron Burrows, uh, the same year, 99, she, ha she had a bumper year because she was in Miss Julie, in which she played the title character. The Loss of Sexual Innocence, in which she played English slash Italian twin. And Wing Commander, as Lieutenant Commander Angel yes. Devil. Yes! So that's, it was a, a 
maybe one of her busiest years. And she before that she was in in the name of the Father. Welcome to the Terror Dome. Whatever that that sounds delightful. <laughs> whatever that is. Um, <laughs> Add that to the list of things to cover. Uh, but after this, like I say, I've not, I've not seen a lot that she was in after Deep Blue Sea. She peaked, let's say, at Deep Blue Sea. This is, this is the pinnacle. This is everyone's pinnacle. Yeah. Well, you could maybe argue that Sam Jackson was was in Jurassic Park. No. Perhaps. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he peaked uh, six years earlier. Forget about Do the Right Thing, Hateful Eight. Forget about Django Unchained, Pulp Fiction, Jackie Brown, Deep Blue Sea. Okay, I think we're done with the newspapers. So the office that they're in, is that uh, is that Russell Franklin's or is that uncredited office? Well, all right, so this is where it gets weird. In the original script, they sent Sam Jackson a script where he was going to be a chef. There was two chefs in the Aquatica. They said no to that, and then Rennie called him back and said, I'm going to make you the richest man in the world. So that's what that's what Sam Jackson said. So I'm thinking maybe they pulled a Fast Four, where in Fast and the Furious 4, Braga plays an underling, and you think someone else is his boss, but he's actually the boss the whole time. So maybe they got uncredited Ronnie Cox to sit there to kind of, I don't know, take away from the fact that he's the boss, because that's what he said, and that's what Rennie said to him, and that's what makes sense to me. And I just made a – I compared it to Fast 4, which makes me happy. So that's what – it's not, if you get a comparison to any of the Fast and Furious, you're going to be happy, aren't you? Yeah. So, but yeah, he he is he's uncredited, but IMDb lists him as executive hyphen Franklin's boss, and he is the one sat at the desk. So it makes sense that this is unless he's like hurt his leg and, and Russell stood up to say no, please take a seat. But then there's other chairs, so that wouldn't make sense. So it makes sense that he's he is the boss, but he doesn't speak. He has no lines. He does nothing. He just sits there. What what is going on here? Yeah, what's even a sense of this guy? I mean, even if you look at the camera direction, we hang on him for, I mean, maybe two, I would say anywhere from five to eight seconds total. But there's, he has a close up. Right. But that <laughs> encompasses what? All of three seconds? But even then, like, we're on Sam Jackson the whole time. Your eyes gravitate towards Sam Jackson because he's standing in between those two. I know they're crocodiles, but let's just go ahead and say they're dinosaurs. Wink, wink, nudge, yeah, nudge. It's, it's a Jurassic Park nod. It has to be. <laughs> but. What's the sense you even have this guy? If Samuel Jackson's the richest man in the world, assumedly that comes with that a lot of power, why stand the whole time? Why not just be in the chair showing that you're in control of the room and that you don't need to prove anything to her? Instead, you're just kind of standing there, arm on the chair around this guy like he's a grandpa or an uncle or something. Or maybe the arm around the chair is to show like, hey, I own this guy. Like, yeah, and I, I can own you too. Oh. Think, yeah, that. The hand on the back of the chair is is very important. So th- this is the guy whose name may be above the door, but I I run the place. I gotta say they built a really nice set for this scene. Yeah, so they 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 built this in Mexico, and I guess they flew they flew Ronnie Cox down for this role because he was not doing a movie in Mexico at the time. I checked. So I mean I I like this the set building here. I think it looks like a pretty. I mean, maybe they had more in it. Maybe they brought him in for lines because that's a expensive build for a two minute scene. It Unless is. it's something that already exists, or maybe they were using it for another film. They're like, "Hey, Ali McBeal is shooting down the hall. Hey, <laughs> just give us like two hours, real quick, in and out. We just got to change a couple pictures." Casey McNichol, take books. an extra long lunch. We need your office. <laughs> no, they built I've never this. Never seen the show. <laughs> they built this set in Mexico. Yeah, they, they've got the LA skyline at the back, but that's. A big picture. That's a a screen screened or whatever. Yeah, just a nice painted backdrop. I love those things on stage. Those are great. Absolutely. And then I love how Rennie, during the commentary, Rennie Harlan pat himself on the back for the car noises you can hear. (laughs) He's like, but you're on the 40th floor, so you can't really hear them. (laughs) I love a good bat pack on a a commentary about car noises during an office scene. So do we know why Roddy Cox is in this film? Did, Did he lose a bet or something, or what happened? Does he know somebody on the set? Like, is it like... Like, hey, Ernest Borgnine dropped out. Do we know somebody? And a gaffer was like, look, my uncle's Ronnie Cox. And we're like, get him on the phone. Send him the facts. <laughs> Do something. He's just had dental surgery, so he can't speak. But he can, hey, Uncle he Ron? can sit there like the best of them. <laughs> had he worked with Rennie Holland before? No, he had not. I just I looked through. Because I, I, I figured maybe they were buds. But no, I mean, he had not worked with him before. And he, he, the movie, so he was in Forces of Nature in 99, The Outer Limits, Y2K TV movie, The Secret of Giving TV movie, and he voiced a video game. Yeah, so he was, he was nowhere near where they shot. I mean, I guess it's a quick flight from LA to where they were at. It's still, that's still a flight. He has to tell us he was like, vacationing in Mexico for two weeks. It seems like a very Rennie thing to do, though. I want 
a big name actor in this scene just to add gravitas. But he he doesn't really. Yeah. He doesn't, doesn't he literally just kind of sits there with a couple of close ups where he's kind of frowning a little bit and looking looking pensive. Nick's right. He just knew the gaffer. It's got to be. Hey, my uncle Ron. And they're like great. <laughs> That's wonderful. Or maybe K- uh, Craft Services was like, well, my grandfather, Sean Connery, and like, well, can we get him here? And he's like, well, he's not going to go. Then why did you bring it up, Susan? Why well, just, he's bringing up his Uncle Ron. I want to bring up my grandpa, Sean. Like, well, think uh, of- if, it, if it had been, if it had been like Richard Dreyfus or something, then you, at least you get the nod there to, Ooh. to Jaws or Stephen Baldwin. Uh, yeah. <laughs> No, Shark in Venice was was nine years after this. That Michael Caine would make would make sense. Yeah, yeah, Michael Caine's a great one. Yeah, or um, no, yeah, there's Michael Caine or Strip. It's one of those two would have been would have been perfect. But Ronnie Cox, the closest he's got in his CV is Deliverance. It's just another water film. I think I got it. So Sam Jackson took this role. Sam Jackson took this took this role because he wanted to just play golf the entire time because there's some yeah. great golf courses down there. So maybe, I don't know, he was down there playing golf and Sam Jackson saw him and Sam Jackson just dragged him in. Ooh. He yeah, beat him in a golf that. game. He was like, man, if I can beat you in this game, you have to show up on this movie. And he's like, yeah, all right, let's see what you got. And then Sam just smokes him. We're talking like some Bagger Vance type shit. And they just get him. Wow. I like that. Perfect. Yeah. Can okay. We, let's settle on that. That's so long. So during the meeting, we find out that Russell Franklin has put two hundred million dollars of his money into into Aquatica, uh, which works out inflation wise is three hundred eight million today. So I was expecting that to be more. And let's, let's, get, let's get a sad note, shall we? Dr. Susan McArthur says that two hundred thousand men and women develop Alzheimer's each year. Did some research. It's more than that today. Oh wow! Five hundred thousand in America alone. Wow. A year. So according to BrightFocus.org. That's the depressing fact for this week's show. We're just gonna say I had to look it up, had to do the research. I tried to find out how much Alcatraz weighs and how we you gotta float it. Couldn't do that. Couldn't find that information anywhere. But I found out how many people get outside every year, so good. But that does a that does a good job though of setting up her like like Nick said, that does a good job of setting up her like drive for this. So you have characters like Baron Zemo and Captain America Civil War. I love it how his family died. And then he goes on this mission to tear them apart and at the end he's listening to the voicemail. So there's nothing redeemable about him. But you understand. So at least this gives us something about her that is to like, I guess. Yeah. 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 Thanos wants to correct the universe and just wipe out half the population. She wants to correct Alzheimer's. Yeah. So hand in hand. Rancor just wants to eat. <laughs> All he is is hungry. <laughs> I think we're going to have some listeners to the show who have never listened to us before on other shows. And I, I'm sorry to them who don't understand what we're talking about. Ah, it's fine. It's, it's fine. fine. It's fine. I'd say Google Gary and the Rancors, but I don't think anything would come up. Uh, good luck to you. Listen to some old Lamcasts. So it, more in this office. It, out behind Susan, not so what, what uh, Ronnie Cox can see, like a, a picture, it's a, not a picture, it's like a framed, it was like a building logo through the doorway. And I'm pretty sure it says Chimera. Yeah, it's Chimera. Is that the name of the company? Is that is that Canon? Yep, that's Chimera. Okay, okay, good. And it works on a few things. I mean, it's like a single organism composed of cells with more than one distinct genotype, or it's a fire-breathing female monster with a lion's head, goat's body, and serpent's tail. So you're genetically splicing these sharks, so you're turning them into something else, and it's a single organism composed of cells from more than one distinct genotype. So it's kind of a neat double, almost, play on words. I mean, it's well thought out. Yeah, and it's also the... the Virus in Mission Impossible 2 the following year, uh, which is, is kind of my, whenever I hear Chimera, I think, oh, Mission Impossible 2. But now, now I will think Deep Blue Sea. Oh, wow. The superior film. And I gotta say, I like the whole, I like that Susan McAllister's getting sharks, because I looked this up, and with sharks, there's five things that they can kind of advance human medicine, and that's with wound healing, cancer, hospital infections, Alzheimer's disease, and fibrosis. So they have Australian researchers developed a drug that mimics a part of a shark's immune system to treat uh, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So this shark that they're studying, and actually Makos are some of the smartest sharks around. So you have this kind of double meaning with Chimera, then you, there's Mar- Makos, which are actually the smartest, and then sharks, which are used to advance human medicine. So once again, man, like this is this is my, me saying again that this movie's not so bad it's good. I mean, they thought it through, and it makes sense that there would be sharks and there would be this chimera. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you sold me on it. I there's I can't add anything to that. Like, <laughs> you, that is signed, sealed, delivered. I'm yours. You know what I'm saying? Rennie Harlan. Dude's my boy. <laughs> makes a lot of sense. 
And uh, on, on the other side of Saffron Village, we've got a, uh, a, f- a framed picture of someone stood next to a giant fish that they may have 